When I saw America's amazing recovery in the last 10 years of the last century, after it lost much ground to industries in Japan and Germany, I appreciated the full meaning of the Americans being entrepreneurial. But for every successful entrepreneur in America, many have tried and failed. Quite a few tried repeatedly until they succeeded. Quite a few succeeded and continued to create and start up new companies as serial entrepreneurs. This was the way America's, America's great companies were built. This is the spirit that generates a dynamic economy. Now, Chinese culture and values. They have determined the aspirations of generations of their bright students. So there's this interesting video I want you guys to watch. It's about the father of Singapore, Lee Kuan Yew. And he explained the entrepreneurship culture between China, America, and Singapore. Like I said in a previous video, and Lee Kuan Yew was the person who most people have said single-handedly built Singapore. In fact, what Singapore is today, he made it. And that is the model that countries like Rwanda under the leadership of Paul Kagame is trying to follow because they realize that it's a model that really works. So let's listen to what Lee Kuan Yew had to say. Everybody celebrated getting rich. Hence the Enron case until they were discovered. Everybody wanted to be rich and tried to be as a great urge to start new enterprises and create wealth. The U.S. has been the most dynamic society in innovating and in starting up companies to commercialize new discoveries or inventions, thus creating new wealth. American society is always on the move and changing. They have led the world in patents, striving to produce something new or do something better, faster, cheaper, increasing productivity. Having created a product that sold well in America, they then marketed it worldwide. When I saw America's amazing recovery in the last 10 years of the last century, after it lost much ground to industries in Japan and Germany, I appreciated the full meaning of the Americans being entrepreneurial. But for every successful entrepreneur in America, Many have tried and failed. Quite a few tried repeatedly until they succeeded. Quite a few succeeded and continued to create and start up new companies as serial entrepreneurs. This was the way America's, America's great companies were built. This is the spirit that generates a dynamic economy. Now, Chinese culture and values. They have determined the aspirations of generations of their bright students. Ever since the spring autumn period, that's about 770 to 403 BC, traditional Chinese societies have valued first the scholar, Shi, second, the farmer, Nong, third, the worker, Kong, and fourth and last, the merchant, Shang. This is the social hierarchy of an agricultural society and has not changed much in popular culture. The merchant class did not enjoy high social status in most agricultural societies, not only because their economic role was not obvious, because they were always making on the percentage, but also because it was often considered unproductive. Traditional China under the Confucian order was a highly developed society based on a self-sufficient agrarian economy, not open or willing to embrace changes. Such a society did not spark off the Industrial Revolution. 
I think this is a very interesting lesson that most of us can learn. And the Lee Kuan Yew was someone that people really looked up to. And like I said in a previous video, right, he wasn't someone that you could play with. He wasn't your friend, right? It wasn't like that Jovia Joe at the corner of the street. He wasn't like that nice person. Because if you cross him, <laughs> if you cross him, you're going to get the worst of him, right? He, like, he doesn't take that lightly. <laughs> he was someone who did what he said he was going to do. And so many people in Singapore feared him. And I have said this many times, right? Uh, I do not have problem with having dictators and authoritarians in power. I don't see a problem with that. I have a problem when those people are in power and still cannot do what they are supposed to do. Because as a leader, you have a job to do. You have certain responsibilities to do. Like making the lives of the people better. Like making sure the people have good healthcare system. Like making sure the people have good passable road, good drinking water, and constant electricity. These are just like the basic things that people expect from their leader or from their government. And if you are a leader and you are unable to provide these basic things, what kind of a leader are you? Can you call yourself a leader at all if you cannot even provide the basic things to your people? You see? That's why when I see countries in the Middle East that are so authoritarian, like Qatar, like um, Saudi Arabia, like um, UAE, they have no freedom of speech. In fact, zero tolerance to protest. I look at what they have done for their people and for the country as a whole. And I'm like, okay, they might not have everything they might not have the rule of law. They might have embezzled so much money because remember, these royal families, they live like God. They have everything at their disposal. So they, they, they might have gotten all these things. But at least there is a good road for the common person to drive on. There is a good hospital for the, for, a, for the common person to go to when he or she is sick. There is a good school for children to be educated. And people from these countries can stand up tall and be proud when they move abroad to say, oh, my country is a beautiful place. We have roads, we have this, we have that. If you go to a small country like Qatar, you'll be like, wow. Yeah, you, it, you'll be, wow. Qatar is a very small country, but what they've done so far is like, wow. You go to China. China is massive. China is communist in, communist in nature. But if you see what they've done in a relatively short period of time, you'll be like, wow. 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 Then you come to Africa and you'll be like shocked to see that we have authoritarians there, but they are doing nothing to better up our lives. We are all suffering and struggling day in, day out. This is a big shame. So I hope when people watch this video, they can get something from it because Lee Kuan Yew was someone people admire. And people still admire, like I personally admire the way he built Singapore. I do. And I hope that Paul Kagami can do the same for Rwanda, following through with the Singaporean model. So 
I pray and hope that he comes through with this. But you guys out there, let us know your take on Lee Kuan Yew. Have you ever heard about him? And if yes, what is your perception or opinion about him? Let us know in the comment section below because like always, we love hearing what you have to say. And also, please don't forget to like this video, share this video, follow our Facebook page, and most importantly, subscribe to this channel because little bit of good we, like the one you're doing just now, help us a lot and we shall forever be grateful to you. So thank you very much for doing just that. And like always, see you in the next one. Thank you.